today on Xenu the Don, the continuation of the repair of six show lasers, part five, where I'm just going to replace the miscellaneous components that need to be replaced on the show lasers. So this will include the key interlocks, fuses, the one ILDA port on the ABLE laser, and uh, yeah, those things. So let's get started with that. So the first thing we're going to be replacing, um, the last thing that I looked at on the last video was the interlock key switch for this Sididini laser. So I've ordered new key locks. Um, I ordered the smaller one because the key lock on the ABLE laser is the smaller kind looks like. So I figured it's always easier to make something adapt to a smaller, sorry, to adapt to a larger hole than it is to adapt something that's too large to a small hole. So I've got the small ones, figured it'd be easier. So this is how it looks like adapted. And uh, otherwise they're a little bit smaller. You'll see what they look like coming up. So let's get the, what, this one put in. This one goes in like this. This fits in and I am going to then take the original lock washer, lock nut, and put that on. See if we can get that tightened down with the fingers. I don't think we are. Getting a tool in this is going to be awfully interesting. Putting that lock in was not easy. Uh, the metal on the outside it had expanded just a little bit, so I figured cut out all that struggle video work, get straight to soldering. So this way, coming off this test switch in the back, it's not long enough to reach over to the key interlock on the back. So I'm going to be putting on a longer wire on the back. I'm also going to put some hot glue on those spare connections once they're soldered on. That way I don't have to worry about anything getting in to those. Looks secure. Let's uh, move on to the switch now. There are two little connectors on the back of the key switch, and the two wires that need to connect to that are the black one right here coming off the safety interlock, and then the yellow wire that I just soldered there. So these will be our two connections. So the black wire looks like it's long enough. And uh, I'm just going to cut it right there at the base of the switch, a little testing switch. And I'm going to shorten the, the other wire as well. Uh -huh. Give that a little trim. And uh, now to apply some heat shrink to both those connections. A little bit of solder, and those will solder on the back of that switch real nice. We have to uh, tin this one or not, not tin, strip this one back. I think we'll get away with it. Yeah, that's definitely, that'll work. Uh, 
and uh, next to the other one. Oh, that's not very satisfying. Looks pretty good. Give it a test. Uh, it helps to plug the power in. Yep, it's good. Cool. All right, well, I'm going to get this laser put back together. Said, so get some uh, hot glue on the back of this, heat shrink that, and uh, do the gluing on here, yeah. All right, well, switch is installed. Uh, just alignment work on this laser to be done. Everything else looks good. Both light space units need new fuse mounts, so got these fuse mounts that will just go right into the back of each one. And uh, nothing special about that. They just kind of slide in. And uh, we'll get those soldered into position too. Just let's see if the, the front is reversible. Oh, yeah, it is. Excellent. Cool. Alright. A little space and everything else. So, I say for the time being, we're not going to completely lock it into position. Because I want to be able to rotate it while it's in the case. Just get a little bit more access to the points of where we're going to be soldering to. 
I do definitely want to get the hardware and at least kind of in position. Alright, and as before, I've got this section right here and that C point in the live wire where the fuse goes in and it's just a series connection between the power con and the switch right up here. So, nothing too exactly spectacular about that. Yeah, I think I want that further away from the heat source. It's going to be interesting. These are fairly thick wires. Let's see how that reaches down now. Hopefully we don't need to add on any kind of extension. And that is just going to make it, isn't it? No space saving and uh, no waste of space in that wire. All right. Should prepare that wire because it is such a necessity that we don't clip any off. We're gonna take the needle on those pliers. Let's see if I can give it a more narrow end that way I can kind of attach it down a little bit better and then of course with the heat shrink on it I don't like it. Not a fan. We'll see how it goes. These extra short wires in here really do make this process a little difficult to do. Uh, the second light space unit over here should be a little easier because there is a lot more clearance on these wires. They're a little longer, so they should reach the new fuse holder no problem. So first I gotta get in there and take out the old fuse holder. Both of the fuse mounts, little fuse holders, have been installed. I would have gotten better video footage of it. However, the situation of the hand is just going to be obstructive anyway. So, sorry about that. It is as it is. But now we're at the point where we can do the heat gun and then throw a little bit of hot glue on these as well. Simply because um, the way the cables are there, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the back of the fuse holders. So, you don't want that pressure of breaking off any of those little tabs on the back.
Alright, with those done, I think it's time to move on to the Able Laser. The laser I've been waiting for. Huzzah! Alright, on to the Able Laser now. Let's get this thing open, see what's inside. The last two screws. Yeah, mostly end up. So, two things to really worry about on this laser. That is the key switch. Uh, there's a key still in there, and it's stuck in the on position. Uh, yeah, so that needs to be replaced. Can we turn it off? Yes, we can. I don't think that key is coming out. Well, you know, that's why we got replacements. Uh, that's relatively nice looking, actually. Alright, so, well, yeah, here's the problem. So, let's see. I'm going to move in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, so, here's where the... ILDA input is supposed to be and isn't. So let's see which is. Yep. Alright, so we're going to have most of our input pins on this side, and it looks like a lot of these pads that are pulled are just unused planes. So some of these will need to be wired up. It looks like that one needs to be wired up. We'll just run a wire from here to there. Check the continuity of everything as we go down, but brand new ILDA port to go in, DB25 port. So, we're going to knock off some of the solder as best as we can, so, although it looks pretty smooth. Removing connectors like this can be a pain. You know, the easiest way to do this, if you're going to remove one of these connectors, is to use a heat gun or something. Take the entire connector all off in one throw. That's probably the best way of doing it. Instead of doing it pin by pin. Ah uh, yes. Looks like the common ground also needs to have a, another wire run to it. That's no problem at all. Get that into position, and uh, we'll just go along and solder all those into place. Yeah, that looks, uh, looks okay. Uh, let's get ready to run those little wires across. Let's see which wires are bad. It looks good. Looks good.
I don't like that one. That looks good. Uh, I suppose these two are interlocks. So uh, those should probably be jumped for this test, yes? I would say so. Alright, the ILD cable input is hopefully fixed. I haven't even powered this thing on. I don't even know if it... Uh, will uh, glow or make smoke at this point so that's the next thing to do uh, let's plug it in uh, do I have to turn the safety on? is the safety on the Oh, it is, isn't it? Who puts it? Oh, who does that? The key is on the AC side of things. That is unfair. Bad, bad laser manufacturer. Nice, pretty LEDs on the inside. Can't complain about that. Where's the where's the leafing though? Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. These interlock pins are the wrong way they need to be. Touching a different way. But that's what the problem is. The interlock pins. It worked. Excellent. I'm happy. Let's solder those together real quick. connect and not enough cords. It's my life. Uh, yeah. Get these soldered together and then we can independently test, test our color channels. However, they all look like they are there. Which is nice. Oh, yeah. Off you, heathen. On you, heathen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And behold, laser output very soon. Uh -huh. And uh, there we are. Very beautiful. Excellent. Good laser, nice laser, happy laser. Alright, I've adapted the new key switch for the interlock. 
and uh, I removed the old wire that was on the fuse. I've got this already stripped, and I'm going to be now attaching that to the fuse. And uh, I don't want that switch, that key switch, in the path of the main voltage. It just doesn't seem like a good place for a little key switch. I know it's it's rated for it, but I still don't like it. So I'm going to put it on the interlock string instead. On this wire, I think. So we'll see how that goes. I think it's going to work very well, though. It looks like those wires are on the same line. So these two are together and these two are together. So interrupting those two with the switch should be a perfectly functional uh, way to get this in line with everything. Uh, I use heat shrink. It's the bane of my existence. It sure is shrinking on there, isn't it? Don't you love when that happens? I know I do. Heat shrink and tape. Gotta love them. Very small piece. And now I need to find another piece of heat shrink. Uh, let's see what we have. Ah, uh, bigger kind. Here we go. Now uh, you just play nice, will you? That looks good. And now, let's see what we have for extra wire. Oh yeah, that'll reach over very nicely. So, cut that right there. Run that through. And uh, it should just make it there. I let go too soon. That looks like it'll work just nice. And uh, yeah, we'll drop this one up and around and through. Oh, that's a tight squeeze, but it will make it. I like it. I like it a lot.
No. Now that all the heat shrink is in position, we can heat shrink those connections a little bit. Nice. Very nice, very nice. And a little bit of hot glue on those connections. Can't hurt anything. Support that up and we can put the ILDA in. And this laser, it looks like I have everything replaced, the ILDA port and the key switch, so we should be good to go, right? Or not. Anyway, slip it on. See what happens. And now we're going to get output. Don't worry. But we do have a problem. Let's see what the problem is. On. And there is a safety system delay again. So... We're gonna wait for that. Uh huh. Okay, so you can see up here, we do have laser output. That's perfect. So, off with the laser, off with the whole unit. We're gonna turn it back on again. And uh, turn on the laser. We're gonna wait for this scan safety system to figure out its job again. We're gonna see if we get output. Well, you can see, getting some laser light, but we're not getting the output image. Well, why aren't we getting an output image? Well, let's see what's going on. So, obviously we're getting some laser light here, flying camera vision. We're getting some laser light, but it's not going the right way. So where's it going? Good question. All right, well, your first thing, if you'll notice, that galvo mirror is not in the right orientation. And that is the X Galvo mirror. And uh, so what we're going to do, turn off the laser. And you see right there, it's pointing upwards. That's not good. Turn it off, flip it on. Still pointing upwards. Flip it off, flip it on, pointing upwards. Flip it on, pointing sideways. Flip it on, pointing uh, not the right way. You can see that that galvo for the X movement is not finding a proper position. It's not working correctly. What is the deal with that? Um, you have to actually kind of put it back to where it's supposed to be. And then it'll work. What's the devil with that? There's a galvo problem. Of course, with that uh, yellow position in the right area, we get the output that we should be getting. So, what is the problem of that? Turn off the unit. We'll see two things here. So, what's going on? So, we have two galvos right here. Uh, we have one for the Y, which is the lower one. And uh, if I push that, it locks there and locks there. So, it can't over travel. But if we take the X axis galvo, we can take that mirror and just spin it around. And you see a little bit of uh, mirror damage on there. But yeah, so that's why you got all the streaking here. Some of the streaking down here that's uh, been reflected back into the laser. 
which is no good. So, just like on uh, other gobbles that I've taken apart of this style, I'm assuming inside that there's going to be a little rubber block or something that has been kicked loose by the little paddle plate. There's quite a bit of force coming off that uh, mirror when the system turns off. So I'm suspecting we're going to get in the back of that cover. But before we get inside of this Galvo, I really want to get inside of the laser head itself. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little break from uh, all the monotonous work and uh, we're going to have a very magical journey through this. Yeah, let's do that. All right, it's Christmas time. Let's go ahead and open up this uh, laser head. Last time I opened up a laser head this big, it was uh, in an Art Fox laser, and uh, it was really disappointing. I'm hoping not to be disappointed with this uh, laser assembly, and considering Able Laser is a really good brand. I'm anticipating lots of goodness inside of this laser head. Let's hope I'm not disappointed. All right, four screws. Cool, I hope that's it. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. I'm so ready for this. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah, let's take a look inside of this. Very nice. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna turn on the laser. Uh, I'm gonna put a beam stop here. I definitely do not trust those yellows. Uh, and we're gonna turn this thing on. This is gonna be spectacular. Oh, a nice little LED indicator too. On. Cool. That is a really fancy laser module. I love it. And uh, let's get a signal getting fed into that laser as well. Oh, this is going to look great. Can't wait. Uh, spectacular. So I'm going to turn off the light here so we can see uh, where the beams are going. Alright. So, uh, yeah. This is what we got going on. We got uh, a bunch of the red lasers here. Probably the same uh, single mode reds. Uh, don't see any uh, laser output on that laser. Interesting. Red. Red. Nothing. I wonder if that red is even good. Uh, red. No red output. Looks like two of the reds aren't working. I'm going to turn up the brightness a little bit more. Weird. Oh yeah, it does look like two of the red lasers are not working. So, uh, this laser and, uh, this laser right here. Huh. That's sad to see. Uh, Alright. Well, we also got a, uh, green laser here. The green laser beam coming off, being reflected by that little mirror right here. And, uh, it looks like we have a, yep, blue laser right here. So, green laser comes in here. Uh, in this top area, reflects off this mirror, comes down, hits this dichroic filter, and uh, the dichroic filter mixes the green and the blue, and the mixed green and blue lasers uh, bounce off this mirror and then go into this optic right here, which is probably a lens assembly for the uh, correcting optics and a spatial mode modulator. It's basically, uh, to make sure the beam is looking really good and uh, yeah, a knife edge arrangement with uh, six red laser diodes. Uh, in this case, four it looks like. Uh, 
So sad. So very sad. And all the lasers are wired in series. I'm vulnerable. Hmm. Not even the slightest. I don't like that. No laser orbs either. I don't like that. Oh, but the mechanical assembly is just, it's beautiful. Oh, I could look at that all day if I had the time. But you do. Just hit pause on the video and enjoy. Oh, we gotta take a look at that a little more. All right. Flying camera action. Um, all right, so this is the thing. Got the uh, the red outputs. Bad red laser diode here, and it looks like we have another bad red laser diode here. But uh, yeah, all the knife edge arrangements, and uh, that here over to the. A beam splitting cube, the polarized beam splitting cube, and then off to the final dichroic glass where the red and the green and the blue coming from here merge into the white beam coming out of the front. Uh, what a beauty. Alright, let's move on to that X Galvo here, see what its problem is. Now, we have two options on this. We can either make it better, or we can make it worse. So, this will be interesting. I probably should remove the Galvo from the laser, but I really don't want to risk any damage to that mirror. So, I'm going to see if I can leave it in. Ah, mice and men. Yeah, here we go. That, uh, interesting. Okay, so I've taken off the cover from the Y Galvo as well, just so I can compare the two. Here's what we got going inside. So I got one little photo sensor down here, and uh, it looks to have multiple inputs. So probably a two-segment photo sensor, it looks like. And uh, then we got the two infrared LEDs. So these LEDs emit light outwards. And if you notice real closely, this is actually a square. So this lower corner right here is the division between what acts like the two mirrors. So you have one mirror here and then one mirror here. And the light just reflects off those corners at uh, different intensities, which is how the scalvo keeps track of where the rotor position is. So the construction, it looks like, is that there is a solid pin that goes through a hole that's drilled in the back of the galvo stator. And uh, the other one has such a kickback when it turns off that it just sheared that little pin right into two pieces. Now, I don't have a solid pin uh, that, like that that's long enough. So what I want to try to do is put like a little, uh, little piece of metal in there and uh, make a rubber stopper and glue that on top of this area here. And hopefully that'll prevent uh, the galvo from over-traveling uh, without that little uh, over-travel stop pin in there. 
No, that's my thoughts right now. We'll see how well that works and uh, give it a try. I'll also take a look at this 14-pin uh, IC, look up the data sheet, figure out what it is. Not exactly sure what it is at the moment, but I'll get that information up there for you guys, no problem. So, let's go ahead and attempt that method of repair. Okay, well, let's check if it still works after all that invasiveness. Alright, so, have we made things worse by messing with that galvo so far? Nope, not yet. Alright, now time to put in a pen. Be enough, and now carefully glue that. All right, got the little rubber stopper there. Now I'm gonna tell you, if you are doing a little pin inside of the galvo there, uh, you're gonna need a hardened steel pin because it just swished that LED lead around the shaft. No problem, lots of kickback on that galvanometer. So I got a little stainless steel pin from one of the little uh, drone motors. So one of these little shafts and just got it in there so that I had to drill it out, get all the glue out and stuff like that. But now that pin is in and uh, the galvo does move. I don't know if you can see that little movement in there, flopping back and forth. But it does work. Uh, it looks to work. Okay, so remember to say we can make it better or worse. There's a third option. We can leave it alone. So I've tried a couple of things. None of them really worked very well. So the first problem is, is that there was a kickback in the galvo which broke the original pin that was in there. So I thought, let's try another design. I tried one pin, wasn't strong enough, just bent around the shaft. I pulled that one out, I put in a hardened steel pin, and uh, what ended up happening is that pin just went right through the rubber uh, stop that I put in there, and then it proceeded to hit the optical sensor on the bottom. And that just happens when the laser is powered down and there's a uh, kickback. Uh, in the Galvo's magnetic system that uh, makes it torque over. The one thing I don't like about these iMagic Galvo's in particular is that the optical system uses a square uh, uses a square shape as a pickup. Uh, once again the problem with that is that it finds a home position in more than one location. We've seen that earlier in the video. I do not like that failure mode. It's, uh, I mean just the fact it can find more than one uh, more than one position to start in as a home position, very bad. So, not a fan of its design, I don't like it. I hope they moved away from using that uh, center pin as an over, over travel stop in the galvanometer. It's a bad design. Well, that's it for this laser repair video. It looks like the next laser repair video is going to be installing the galvo kits in the Sididini and the Light Space unit. Those galvo kits should be coming in relatively soon. This laser right here needs a new X Galvo, so I don't know if he wants to have that iMagic 8000 Galvo replaced. As I said, I wasn't able to fix it, but it does look like it is running pretty well. In the Flight Space unit, there are two red lasers that need to be replaced as well. I have a bunch of 650 nanometer, 400 milliwatt reds that I am looking to put in. However, they are not case isolated. 
they are case negative. So it looks like either I'm going to have to find pretty decent case isolated diodes or I am going to have to isolate electrically the mounts that those laser diodes go in, which looks like it will be pretty easy. This laser as well also looks to need two new red laser diodes. However, the color balance looks like it's pretty good. You can see there uh, it's a little green heavy and a little blue heavy, but the whites still look relatively good and there are calibration knobs on the back. In order to get this red running as best as it can, um, it's best to replace all the laser diodes all at once. And this is because as laser diodes run, the junction will break down. So even if I put in just two new red laser diodes in this one, uh, the current that is shared between each laser will not be perfectly balanced. And that's, you know, that's not good to have on a string of laser diodes in series. So you want to get laser diodes that are as close as possible to one another. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And, as always, stay tuned for more. It's nice to see some life come out of this light bulb. Oh, that's beautiful. More fog. That is way better than getting stickers in school.